Yes. Please the court, mother. Thank you for the indulgence, mother. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel. Now, having admitted that you never use the CMA, uh, the CMS as a method of um, ballistic analysis in any of the tests that you are required to do, you only were using the. You were only were using the pattern matching as a form which was taking precedent within the forensic science laboratory. Just a quick one on this. Exhibit MM1, uh, page. Page three, page three of M exhibit MM one. Now, what kind of a of a of a of a, of a method is that one? It's just a simple answer. What kind of a method is that one? Is it pattern matching? Or CMS matching. And the law looks like I see the tattoo. If you have any, you have a CMS, no pattern matching. The the process is the same. As it is record, my lord. The 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 this this I'm going to request that this page be demonstrated on the screen so that the accused are able to follow as well. Yes. So, what kind of a of a of a of a method is this that is demonstrated in page three of Exhibit MM one, which was prepared by you? The, the process is the same, but the interpretation is done in terms of pattern matching. Uh, but I'm asking you, is that a pattern? What is demonstrated on the screen there, which is contained on page three of Exhibit MM1, is that pattern matching, or CM? Is it a pattern matching method or a CMS method? For no as we the work like pattern matching method, no CMS. This marks must be considered in the spirit of pattern matching. But as, as I've already demonstrated, the process of looking for the marks is the same. It's only the, where the counting is involved. No, but you, 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 you seem to be evading my question. My question is simple. What method is here? I'm not saying to you explain what is contained in here. I'm saying to you, as it is demonstrated on page three of exhibit one, which is also exhibited on the screen there, is that a pattern matching method or a CMS method? I'm not saying explain anything. I know the differences, but what we are seeing there, 
What is it? Is it CMS or pattern matching? It can be interpreted either way. Okay, but but what you. I'm saying is that, what I want to clarify is that the process of looking for marks on the exhibit is one process, it's the same. The only difference comes when you consider the marks that you are going to, to use for an identification. The <laughs> process is exactly the same. So this image can apply for both CMS and for pattern matching. But for the interpretation of these marks, I'm following pattern matching interpretation. <laughs> now, that is in terms of exhibit, uh, in terms of is TB8, not so? That is correct. So you're basically saying what we're seeing there, all those marks up to six on both sides, on the exhibit and the test bullets, all those six marks there indicates to you that this is a pattern matching. No, there's no specific image for pattern matching or for CMS. This image can also be used by people who apply CMS. It can also be used by pattern matchers. But the, the interpretation of these marks which are visible on this specimen uh, is based on pattern match. That is the interpretation. So what you're telling this court is that those marks which are numbered from one up to six, your interpretation thereof is that they represent pattern matching. They can be interpreted in pattern matching and on CMS as well. Thank you, sir. I don't want to argue with you on this point. You said you never used the CMS method in any of the analyses that we have done thus far. How would you then have been in a position to use those marks? I mean, those numbers include them in this, in this, in this, in this, in this exercise, and interpret them to also to say that they may be pattern matching or CMS when you never used CMS. I know the theory of CMS, how it works, but I don't use it. I, 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 I don't use it. I, I use pattern matching for interpretation. Thank you. So these striations can be counted in terms of the same striations which are visible here. I'm not saying explain, sir. I'll, I'll accept thank you. It means I'm satisfied with your answer. Thank you. I'm going to put it to you, sir. Actually, before I come to that point. Now we... There's one thing that I want to bring to your attention. So remember we spoke about, you said um, as per procedure, once an examiner examined 
and analyzes exhibits and come to a positive finding and they are confirmed by his colleague, that is the end of the story. There's no longer any need for a third or a fourth or a fifth reference. The reason why in this case there had to be a third umpire, a fourth umpire, and a fifth empire. No, there were actually four. The third, that is now Feljun, Ntini, and Fenter. The reason why there was a further reference to them, it is because this was not a clear cut case, it was a borderline case. Uh, we object against that proposition. We object to that proposition. It presupposes that these people were approached after Colonel Sereo has done the verification. Um, we, we, we submit, my lord, that there's no evidence as to at which stage Colonel Mangena approached them. It can therefore not be accepted that it was after this witness verification. So you're saying there's no foundation for that uh, conclusion? Yes. Indeed, my lord. It cannot be put as a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's my assertion, because I'm going to argue on it, my lord. Oh. And I'm putting it as a fact, because this very same witness says, as far as the protocol within Forensic Science Laboratory, once, as, once an examiner examined analysis and find a positive matching, he goes to a colleague of his who is the uh, reviewing or somebody to confirm his findings. Once that person does that, confirms his finding, that is the end of the story. There is no longer any need to refer the same experiment to a fourth or fifth or sixth. That is his evidence. So I'm putting it to him that specifically in this case, why there was a third reviewer, a fourth reviewer in the name of uh, Mr. F uh, Fessor, Feljun, and Ntini. It's because this was not a clear-cut case. It was a borderline case. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, there's everything wrong with that proposition. We have provided them with the statement of the witnesses. It states the date on which the, um, they were approached for an opinion, and we know the date on which the verification was done. My learned friend can therefore not put that proposition when he sits, he's sitting with an affidavit that states when they were approached for an opinion. Yeah. When uh, on the 22nd of July. 2nd of July, right? 22nd. 22nd of July. Yes, 22nd of July, 2020, and this 2020, witness. 2020, right? 2020. And? and this witness has said he did the verification on the 23rd. And this witness did the verification on the 23rd yes. of July. Okay. Yes, it is the court, my lord. My assertion is it doesn't matter the sequence. Whether they were approached before this witness, whether they were approached after this witness, for the fact that there were four that were actually requested to go through this exhibit, when this witness has said it in no uncertain terms that two is enough where there's a positive match, my assertion, therefore, is this was not a clear-cut case. It was a borderline case, which is... That simply meant that Mr. Mangena was saying, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm not sure here. Let me go to the, the third one. He still could not assure himself that his findings were certain. Then he went to a fourth one. He went to uh, Fedjun. He said, no, I, I'm not sure. He went to Fesser. He said, no, I, I, I can still not say this. And then he said. went to Ntini. Fine. Yes, that no, is my assertion. And I, the reason why he did that, because this was not a clear-cut case. It was a borderline case. Now, fine. I hear the assertion. You're entitled to put it. Yes. But Mangana's evidence is that they agreed with me. Yes. Yes. In terms of the results, That's yes. Right. And they this agreed with me. And yes. then this other piece of evidence is I'm 100% certain. My Lord. That's Mangana's evidence. Now, you can argue whatever you want to argue. Yes. But in this court... That's what Mangena said. I don't dispute okay. that, my lord. Mangena said, yes, I find a positive match. I took it to Mr. Cirero. He agreed with me. And Mr. Cirero, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Cirero says, where there's a positive match, 
is the examiner who must pen an affidavit and the affirmer of his results, who is me. Beyond that, there should not be anything. Now, I am saying, for the fact that Mr. Mangena went on to consult other three people or to confirm his positive results, that is an indication that this was not a clear cut case. That's okay, fine. No it problem. was a difficult case. Yeah. Thank you, my lord. Mm. Finally, sir, let me put it to you. Then I've got no further questions to you. Thank you. Yes, any re exam? <laughs> Just picking up from this last aspect by Advocate Nisi. Is it an acceptable practice in the um, forensic community to seek the opinion of your colleagues? <laughs> That is correct. Analysts are allowed to consult each other. But to testify that there's only one verifier, is that correct? That is correct, my lord. And you also testify that those colleagues who give an opinion, um, they can only do so after viewing the specimen. That is correct, my lord. And you mentioned that um, this exchange of opinions is an informal process. That is correct, my lord. And that those who finish such opinion do not need to complete any worksheet. That is correct, my lord. Now, during cross-examination by Advocate Nisi, when he was cross-examining you on the procedure followed by Lieutenant Colonel Mangena in collecting the firearm from Cleveland Police Station and how he dealt with it thereafter, you wanted to refer to the exhibit of Colonel Mangena to, that is correct, my lord. And you mentioned that this affidavit was pointed to you yesterday. You you were referred to this affidavit yesterday. That is correct, my lord. I just want to show you an exhibit that was referred to yesterday. You can indicate if this is the um, same affidavit that was that you re referred to this exhibit X thirteen B. And there's also exhibit thirteen C. If you can just check those exhibits. Yes. Because 
if we can start with exhibit X13C, page 4. You can see the In particular, paragraph six thereof. Exhibit 13, X13C. Paragraph 3. I see it, my lord. Yes. Is it paragraph 3 or 4? Uh, I'm sorry, paragraph 6. 6. six. Yes, paragraph 6. Okay. On page five, I see it, my lord. Yes, as which one? Uh, I wanted to refer to to paragraph six in my reply. When first something, could you remember paragraph six and you can learn one? Paragraph six point one to be specific. Okay. Yes. It reads as follows. There is sufficient class characteristics but insufficient individual characteristic markings transferred to these bullets by firearm components during the firing process, which, which could be due to the difference in bullet material. As a result, I took a decision to obtain additional tests of the of the same material as the exhibit bullet. individual characteristics in Bonagada Kudesinzamvuisepa'amu,gele <laughs> Yes, so what did you want to elaborate on? Uh, what I wanted to elaborate on is on the basis of this, uh, I mean, this, this, this paragraph shows the reason why uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mangena has had to go and obtain the firearm to fire additional test. So in my answer I wanted to to refer to these circumstances. <coughs> Advocate Nisi further put it to that regarding the firearm and the bullet that Lieutenant Colonel Mangena put under the microscope said that there's no dispute between the state and the defense. What were you were you able to understand what he meant by that? Well, my understanding is that they agree with the positive finding. 
mina ebengi kuzwa ngale wanto bengi sukuti kwa sukuti agu kumbi kuzwa ano nukuti kwa kutola gale umbigo o kwa sa ukuti ngembele ukuno kufana na kwa kwa nizika no objection Objection. I think they are, they are, they are, they are, no, 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 it's objection. They are misleading the record. No, no, no. That is not what I said. I said the process. Please, that's not procedure. This, no, but my Lord, I cannot keep quiet and allow the state no. to fit this, uh, to, to, to fit this court with wrong information through this witness. This that the, I can allow. Mr. Nisi, it is the witness saying this, not, not Mr. Baloi. It's the witness. Oh, Baloi, I don't know. Are you saying? Yes. <laughs> We, <laughs> we. Um, no, just repeat that question yes. because it appears like Mr. Mnisi is saying you are feeding, you are feeding yes. this, yes, this witness with the answer. Yes, as we have it, my lord, it was put to the witness that regarding the firearm and the bullet that Lieutenant Colonel Mangena put under the microscope, there is no dispute between the state and the defence. Right. And we're asking this witness, how did he understand that proposition? Uh, my understanding was that they do not dispute the finding that the bullet was fired from the fire the exhibit firearm. I think it is the state that is responsible for this for a test bullet four and eight. That is correct, my lord. It was well over to a seven. They say in town for the number eight and the number four. Uh, who would take a who's the floor? The bottom of Slegas, who's the last one is in town. Once again, we're now okay. Tiger, who would take a this was seven seven. All of this in town for a B. What year? Did you check the other test bullet for any similarities with the evidence bullet except for test bullet four and eight? That is correct. I check all of them. Yes, and what was your finding? They indicated that they have sufficient marks for common indicating common origin. An advocate, Ms. Ifeda, asked you about the fact that the test uh, bullet used by Lieutenant Colonel Mangena, which referred to test bullet number nine, that he did not have indentation. Um, can you just put in record again what type of bullet was? Um, Bullet number eight. And you take a um, 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 Jacket bullet. Uh, what is number eight? We know the trouble in town for a try full metal jacket. And of what type of material is it made? Yeah, going I look for trouble in This kind of a bullet is uh, the core is made up, is made out of lead. Out of lead. Oh, we should take a last day town for the nugget laying a parati wire. We should hear going on too. And he's got a Copper jacket. We should take a long pants like why okay? In a the 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 type of try cop. It's actually a mixture of copper and other materials. We should take a long pants so when the copper needs in it in it. In terms of classification, is it classified as a um, as made 
of hard material or soft material. It's a harder material relative to CMJ. Yes. And, and just finally, um, Advocate Nisi asks you the following question. He asks you in, de in determining whether a mark seen under a microscope is is it subjective or objective? We must have a buzzer, we would take a power banana pass with a microscope. Who power owning a bona in a number and you don't jump about you and Jordan, no more guess who could poke our band. And you respond, you responded that yes, identification of those marks are subjective. But you testify that the marks on specimen um, form objective facts, is that correct? But that is correct. And you testify that what is on the surface of a specimen is encoded. The marks are there, um, but these marks must be decoded and that by the analyst, and that depends on the level of training, uh, knowledge, and skill. That is correct, my lord. Is it the subjective element that you're referring to? That is correct. Thank you, my lord. Don't have any further questions. Yeah, just one. This, uh, just Display it on the mic, I mean on the screen. It's exhibit triple L3. It's written exhibit bullet 217267 stroke A2 stroke stroke test bullet different firearm. What do you understand by that? <coughs> image on the screen. You know what you told I was going to do? This is the Islam on the screen. The two marks known to have been produced by two different uh, tools were compared, were deliberately compared with each other. Different tools, which tools are those? The firearms, my lord. Firearms? That is correct, my lord. Two firearms? Two different firearms, Two different lord. firearms? That is correct, my okay, lord. Okay, fine. This image uh, was not produced by me, my lord. It was, that is how it was explained to me. It is coming from the, from the defense. Okay. So, an attempt was made to show that uh, even in 
tool marks known to have been produced by, by, by two different tools. There could be a measure of similarity between them. So this is a false match. It is a measure of, of showing uh, best known non match. Which is found in the theory of identification. But when, when a, a positive identification is made, the agreement that must be present must exceed the agreement that is represented by this photo. As it can be seen that it is a, an agreement to a very small degree. Under normal circumstances, the agreement will be indicated by a higher degree of corresponding features. Where the dissimilarities will be in the far minority. Yeah, but pertinently for to me, is it a scientific fact that uh, no two barrels can produce the same image? Each, bar, each barrel will produce its own individual marks. Right. And is it correct? I read the literature, some of it anyway. Is it correct that that is unique to that particular barrel? That is correct, my lord. Now, if Mokotin now mixes two firearms and obviously knows the principle that uh, it's a different firearm, but he uses the bullet in question, in this case, as a concomitant uh, relative uh, <coughs> identification mark or tool, what, do, what does it show? I, I, I do not know the intention of showing this, but what I know, my lord, mm -hmm. is that <coughs> uh, in tool marks mm -hmm. uh, known to have been produced by two different tools. Yeah. You may find a measure of agreement to mm -hmm. a very small degree. But the, the disagreements must be much more significant than the, that agreement. So I do not know here whether the intention was to show that uh, 
these marks will also be visible on two different specimens. I'm not sure, they, because this photograph or this test was done by the defense, my lord. Yeah, I listen to your evidence. You say, for instance, when Mangani shot those eight or nine bullets, he used the same source. Oh, this, the, sorry, the, 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 the source of origin is the same. Because he was using one firearm. That is correct, my lord. This, by the way, source, I'm making reference to the firearm. Yes. And the comparative analysis, logic dictates to me that Because the theory or the principles say that uh, no two barrels or guns or firearms can produce the same image. I'm putting it loosely. Because of different rilings, rufflings and rilings, uh, what, would, what would that experiment prove? What does it prove? In the greater scheme of things, when no. you know that uh, the essence of the test is to show or disprove the fact that a particular firearm either shot or ejected a particular pellet or bullet or not, what would that be in aid of? <laughs> Go, but as Wutige, Wutte or Etige, E. Pamain, Billy, as well as Wutte's keeper, is in power as a fanana. I might have a good look at Bungazabe, but some good bar combi say E. When I compare this image to the rest of the the, the court charts that, yeah. that I have prepared, uh, I don't see any value in this. In this photo, my lord. My man, Katanisa, this is Tombe. Now, this is Tombe, English Lady, the Langa told Angoni Luto, a old Patega, SNRT, doing a certain thing. So, who this is Tombe? This. Okay, lastly, you, your evidence is that you also had sight of the bullets shot by Mr. Manganya. Is it eight or nine of them using one particular firearm? That is correct, my lord. You examined the nine or five, sorry, the nine or eight. Yeah, projectiles under a microscope, a double microscope. That is correct, my lord. I examined eight of them under the comparison microscope. Comparison microscope. That is correct. Which actually focuses the two bullets into one. That is correct, my lord. When you view through the eyepiece. Yes. The examiner is able to see ima the image from the left and the right hand side simultaneous. Simultaneous. That and is correct. In Damon's 10, you see one bullet. I know there are two bullets, but the image you see, is it one or two images? When, it, when the two images are fused together, that's it. It appears as if it is a single bullet. Yes, 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 that's right. Now, according to your opinion, because you tested, you used the microscope, the nine bullets, and you eventually chose two, was this a borderline case? Difficult. Difficult case or borderline case. 
My lord, I cannot say it's a borderline case because the the marks that I have demonstrated here, uh, the, the the amount or the quantity of lines that are visible, do not show that it is a borderline case. I make a one in brackets. Yeah. Uh, it has three pages, my lord. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, thank you. My lord. I say thank you. Thank you, my lord. So, sorry, my lord, I do have questions from the bench question. Is that procedure? From the bench questions, it is procedure, my lord. Is that so? Yes. I say, okay, fine. Uh, Colonel, I just want to clarify, like I told you before, I'm not going to go into the, the, the striations with you because there's an expert retained for that purpose. So I cannot argue with you about the lines and whatever. I'm a legal person. Have you attended a course on CMS? I was just attending internal presentations which were which were done at work. And the rest I was leading the literature on CMS throughout the, the years. <coughs> In particular, the course I'm talking about, uh, Colonel Mangela says he attended. Mr. Peter also says he attended the very same course by the founding fathers of CMS. Okay, Mr. Mangena, Madoc no. and Mr. Moran. Did you attend that course? Oh, Bob Mangena, no, Bob Peter, so what you call it? Fund is a is a fund is a. You know about 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 CMS. That one I did not attend. Okay. Now I'm just going to put this question. If you cannot answer, you cannot answer because our expert will come and testify as to the value that he attached to exhibit triple L3. And you said that you also studied literature on CMS, correct? That is correct. Do you know a study by an examiner, analyst, and author by a SOTI? B A S O T T I. I know by a SOTI, yes. And you know the study that he compared on random marks that will appear on the exhibit bullet and the test bullet in 25% of the cases that he studies, studied using about 700 firearms. You know that study? I know that study. Yeah, but yeah, yes. Like, like I said, I'm not an expert. I was just putting that Mr. Dave Peterson will add the meat, the bone, and the muscles to those arguments. Thank you, my lord. I'm indebted. Yes, Mr. Gomez, will you have any questions? I've got no questions. Mr. Mumalo? Thank you, my lord. I have no questions. I've got none as well. No questions. Okay. Thank you, sir. Khalishiwe. Are you still res resident in Khalishiwe? No, my lord. I left. You left? Yes. Okay. But our ex, our family does not originate from Halishi. Oh. I, I, I stayed there, oh. but but uh, my origin is not there. It's from where? We are we originate from closer to Hasbat, a place called Hasbat. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Hasbat. 
Wait, that was uh, in the in the northwest acting there. Yes, we have cases who Kalishi where has water. Yes, man. Who do more all those areas? Yes, man. So Mutsuana, we don't need. Ki Mutsuana, my lord. Ciao, one. Okay, thank you ever so much. Thank you, man. Yes, Mister. As a court please, my lord. At, at this stage, the state seeks permission to hand up certain exhibits in terms of section 212, subsection 4 okay. of the Criminal Procedure Act. This is already on record, my lord. These are the affidavits of uh, Captain Ntini and Captain Krobla. I think her maiden surname is Felyun. You intend calling Krobla and Ntini? We don't intend calling them, my lord. Those affidavits, so what are they for? Yes, um, these affidavits merely confirm, my lord, that they gave microscopic opinion to Lieutenant Colonel Mangena. Okay. Or to Mangena, not uh, no. the gentleman here. No, my lord. Okay, Mangena, fine. Yes, we, we submit that this affidavit complies with the provisions of section 2124 and that they should be admitted into the record. We've marked them, my lord. Exhibits. Triple N will be the affidavit of Captain Krobla. Right. And exhibit triple zero will be the affidavit of uh, Captain Ntini. Okay. Yes. But before we read them into the record. Yeah, before you read them, Mr. Bumezu, any objection? Please. Yeah, we know the <coughs> road relating to section 10. 212, right? That's correct. 4 and 8. Yes. So you are raising an objection. I'm raising an, obje an objection, madam. Right. The yes. basis for my objection is that, firstly, yeah. there's an existing ruling by this court yes. in terms of Section 186. Mm -hmm. Those witnesses, they are the witnesses of the court. Yeah, fine. So the state cannot dictate how to present the evidence of the witnesses of the court. Okay. The court will bring its witnesses and both parties will then cross-examine from what they, were, they are going to tender as evidence before okay. this court. Mr. Okay. Malota, I do have an objection as well. I also object as well, thank you. Definitely, I've got an objection, Malot, because on the, uh, uh, this document they are saying on uh, 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 their prima facie proof of their content so we therefore putting the state to the proof of this zero. document. Yes. Yeah, there's an onus on them to prove them. Fine. And then the other thing is, you must tell me, you must guide me. You know, this is a lengthy trial. These witnesses, which I, I intend calling in terms of Section 186, normally they should be called after your witness on ballistics has testified. Is that not so, Mr. Ngomali? It is so. Must be so, Mr. Ramsipi. Yes, so. That's it. Yeah. So he wasn't say, "I told you, Zubiza, my witness is mine. I got some abuse." So you can't present No, no. I mean, are the ones I'm calling. The state can do whatever it wants. But the ones, if I intend calling witnesses in terms of 186 pertaining to the ballistic evidence in this case, I've got to do that after the state, if at all. Sorry, the defence, if at all have called their witness if they want to. They are not obliged. Are we understood? I understand. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, fine. Yes, indeed, there is so much, but we just want to add that in the normal course of events, the state has got the first opportunity to call any witness, and um, if the state at the close of its case doesn't call the witness will make them available to the defense, and any any party is entitled to call those witnesses, and the court may also call yeah, those, right. those, those, those witnesses. Yeah, 
problem. I'm seeing this in, in light of Mr. Mgomezulu's argument that these are witnesses for the court. They um, still remain um, state witnesses. <coughs> and be a mindful of what Advocate Nisi said, that they dispute that dispute to their affidavits, but section 2124, it's clear. The state will um, hand up these um, documents and, then and affidavits and, and read them in the record as they remain prima facie proof until the contrary um, is, is proven. So, the, so it does not operate like that. Oh, really? Once we are putting the handing in of those documents, <laughs> in challenge, <laughs> then the state cannot simply say no, despite the, that contestation, I'm handing them in. It, yeah. Documents need to be handed in through those witnesses. No, no, that, I'm listening to two senior advocates. And they are differing on, on the issue. Who should I listen to? Yes. Uh, or who, maybe read, read, read that section. Prima facie means precisely that. No, it uh, says no, it can't you can't that. just say I dispute that and, and, and then say you put the state to the proof of, um, you call witnesses to dispute what is contained in the affidavit. That's, 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 yeah, 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 fine. Yes, yeah. But read, read that section. 212, two, subsection 4 and 8, I think, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Well, section 212 reads as follows. <laughs> proof, the heading is proof of certain facts by affidavit or certificate 212 subsection 1 whenever in criminal proceedings the question arises whether any particular act transaction or occurrence did or did not take place in any particular department or sub department of the state or of a provincial administration or in any branch or office of such department or such sub-department or in any particular court of law or in any particular bank or the question arises in such proceedings whether any particular functionary in any such department, sub-department, branch of office did or did not perform any particular act or did or did not take part in any particular transaction, a document purporting to be an affidavit made by a person who in that affidavit alleges, paragraph A, that he is in the service of the state or a provincial administration or of the bank in question and that is employed in the particular department or sub-department or the particular branch or office thereof or in the particular court or bank B that Roman figure 1 if the act transaction or occurrence in question had taken place in such department, sub-department, branch or office, or in such court or bank, or, Roman figure two, if such functionary had performed such particular act or had taken part in such particular transaction, it would be in the ordinary course of events have come to his or the deponent's knowledge and the record thereof available to him would have been kept and I'll, I'll uh, proceed to um, subsection 4 which is relevant okay. and it reads as follows for paragraph A whenever any fact established by any examination or process requiring any skill in Roman figure one in biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy, geography or geology, Roman figure two, in mathematics, applied mathematics or mathematical statistics, or in the analysis of statistics, Roman figure three, in computer science or in any discipline of engineering, Four, 
in anatomy or in human behavioral sciences, Roman figure 5, in biochemistry, in metallurgy, in microscopy, in any branch of pathology or in toxicology, or, and this is where um, the, this exhibits come in, Roman figure 6, in ballistics. Mm -hmm in their identification of fingerprints or body prints or in the examination of disputed documents is or may become relevant to the issue at criminal proceedings. A document purporting to be an affidavit made by a person who in that affidavit alleges that he or she is in the service of the state or of the provincial administration or any university in the republic or any body designated by the minister for the purpose of this subsection by notice in the Gazette, and that he or she has established such fact by means of such an examination or process shall, upon its mere production at such proceedings, be prima facie proof of such facts provided that the person who may make such affidavit may, in any case in which skill is required in chemistry, anatomy, or pathology, issue a certificate in lieu of such affidavit. Um, the, 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 this, these are the relevant portions. So it, yeah. it's clear that these affidavits are on all fours, my lord, with uh, the no. provisions of section 212, um, subsection 4. <coughs> We are all agreed. That's what the law says. Uh, that is what the law says, my lord. However, mere production presupposes if they are not in contest. If they are not in contest, the state is put to the proof of those documents. Now, the law says the mere production is prima facie evidence or proof, no? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. So the onus rests on who to disprove that? Whoever wants to dispute them, my lord. That's the point. So you can bring evidence to dispute uh, them? No, my lord. It does not work out like that. It okay, means look, there must be an argument okay, between fine. us and the defense, I mean in the state. Fine. Yes. You will argue it further if you want to. Thank you, my lord. Because as I read the law, prima facie proof, it means the contents of the affidavit because the deponent is normally a servant of the state and he makes allegations regarding any aspect which relates to science etc etc geography whatever and that person by mere making that affidavit broadcasts to the world that he is an expert in that field and if the defense says otherwise, they must disprove that. But the mere production of, of this document puts prima facie evidence before this court. That's how I understand the law. If you think I'm wrong, no problem. Indeed, my lord. Then we just want to briefly refer to this handbook by um, Himstra Criminal Procedure. Yeah, yes. that's the uh, Himstra. At page 212, right. he says, um, he calls the case of R versus Jacobson and, and Levy, 1931 AD 466 at 478. This prima facie evidence in its usual sense is used to mean prima facie proof of an issue, the burden of proving which is upon the party giving that evidence, in the absence of further evidence from the other side, conclusive. the prima facie proof becomes conclusive proof, yeah. and the party giving it discharges his owners. Mm -hmm. And it goes on: if the accused, if the accused does not does nothing to challenge prima facie proof, it becomes conclusive proof. And he further on says. The fact that the defense makes a statement that the contents of the certificate are not accepted, and this is what's happening here, mm. does not affect the prima facie evidential value of that certificate. Mm. 
evidential material has to be offered which rebuts the contents of the certificate. Th th that's precisely what, what we see. Okay, yeah. That's how I understand the law. Okay, are we tomorrow then? Yes, we, we, we can. Sitting at 10? Yeah, yes, we can adjourn until tomorrow. Okay, adjourn until 10 tomorrow. <laughs>